graduates any undergraduate students today how many of our faculty faculty registered as a phd students or something like that uh, rest of them are majority of them are faculties Ma majority are faculty okay yes. one per, one person and dr anjana but she already has a phd so who is getting advantage of this who are the people who are really looking forward to learn something who are the phd students or who are the master students your undergraduate students is okay i am not able to see any responses except uh, some some people are talking about in sachin varpe is the only person who may benefit from this is that okay yes sir may i interrupt sir actually about 20 to 30% are phd and phd scholars about 40% Okay. Okay. They may Rishi have to join. Okay. Rishiraj says he is faculty. So, uh, how many of your faculty and registered as PhD students? Unfortunately, I can't see. If you are raising your hand or something, I can't see. I can only see the chat box. Gigi, uh, I think, has raised her hand. and uh, maybe a few others have raised their hand but unfortunately i can't see everything very well here okay okay uh, let us assume that you know uh, people are little shy to respond or whatever um see one of the things is that if you are uh, enrolled as a phd student and if you are a faculty member you have to shed your uh, shyness a little bit okay after all you know you are doing your phd and uh, you are planning to write your thesis etc so you have to learn to be bold okay Bo be bold uh, and be proud of what uh, research you have done right that is the first step in uh, writing a thesis right so writing a thesis you know when does it begin i mean let me ask you that uh, question right so uh, when do you start writing a thesis okay so i suggest that uh, this should be a continuous process right so a lot of people try to write the thesis at the very end of their uh, phd career right of course uh, they may have written some papers uh, and published them and so on right so last time when i was uh, interacting with uh, uh, a similar group of students <clears throat> one question <clears throat> that was asked was see apparently today they use plagiarism checks uh, when you submit your thesis and if you have borrowed from the papers that you have written then unfortunately the plagiarism check uh, you know finds problems okay so this is a tough situation okay um because after all we publish papers which is part of our uh, research work it is not that uh, we cannot copy from our own papers right so uh, the plagiarism check done by conferences that is done with the intention of uh, preventing somebody uh, you know say same research in multiple conferences okay see sometimes what people may do is they will submit uh, the same paper to multiple journals or multiple conferences and uh, sometimes both of them may get accepted okay both submissions may get accepted uh, at that time uh, you know somebody may go and uh, withdraw so these are all considered unethical okay you are not supposed to submit the same paper to multiple conferences okay uh, and then withdraw that is considered unethical and also uh, maybe submitting the same paper uh, and then presenting it in multiple conferences is also not uh, the right thing to do okay so the plagiarism check software were possibly evolved keeping conferences in mind i am not sure whether they were involved uh, whether they, were, they they intended 
to catch these uh, problems uh, in theses, right? Uh, that software may need some little bit of, uh, you know, update, right? So it is wrong to borrow uh, something from other papers, right? It is wrong to borrow from other theses. It is wrong to borrow content that is available, uh, let us say, from the internet or books and uh, any other source for that matter. But uh, it may not be unfair to borrow from uh, your own papers, right? The problem could be that sometimes, you know, when we publish a paper, uh, multiple people may have contributed to that. See, maybe there is a collaboration going on between a master student and a PhD student and an undergraduate student. Uh, the professor has uh, worked together with, uh, let us say, two or three of these uh, students and they have published a paper together. Then unfortunately, you know, when a PhD student tries to report uh, that work as part of uh, his or her thesis, then uh, it may be treated as plagiarism because there were other people involved in uh, doing that work. Okay, that is the only uh, valid uh, argument I can see in uh, somebody objecting to uh, you know, you borrowing directly from a particular paper. Okay. But if it's a, let us say two author paper, one of them is uh, the student and the other is, let us say the PhD advisor, then I don't see why it should be seen as plagiarism. Okay. So that is the, but if the system is like that, if the system cannot be changed, then I have no, uh, you know, there is no easy advice I can give you. Right. So the only advice I can give you is try to restructure your uh, writing so that you know it does not uh, come across as a direct you know plagiarism from a let us say your own paper. Okay. Uh, so my suggestion to you is from the beginning of your uh, research, be aware that a day will come when you will have to submit your thesis, right? and plan accordingly, right? And maybe when you write your paper, etc. my suggestion would be uh, try to write it as a chapter of your thesis rather than write as a paper first. And then uh, maybe extract the paper out of whatever you have written. Okay, that may be the advice I can give you so that you avoid these kind of problems in the last minute, right? So writing a thesis takes uh, time, right? Uh, if you have not done this, right? If you have not written anything uh, throughout your uh, PhD career, and you are trying to write everything in the last, uh, you know, one or two months or three months, then it will be very stressful for you, okay? So my advice to you will be to avoid such a situation, right? Uh, writing should become a part of your uh, PhD, right? Uh, you should not be hesitant to write. Uh, you should not be hesitant to, you know, have a discussion. So when I ask questions to you, uh, if you are hesitating to say anything, then, uh, you know, that is not uh, desirable, okay? If I open a question, you should be competing with one another to, you know, speak up. That is what, uh, you know, will make you a good uh, PhD student, right? The, uh, the PhD students, one of the characteristics that we expect from them is that they are willing to engage in a dialogue, whether it is a written dialogue or whether it is a sort of a, you know, a discussion, right? And, uh, you must make that a part of your uh, sort of uh, everyday life also, right? Uh, when you teach in your class, uh, when you are attending lectures uh, maybe, or when you are interacting with people, when you are, uh, uh, you know, sort of having a, even a social media conversation or something like that, uh, you should volunteer to say something. Okay? If you try, decide to be a quiet person, and, uh, you know, that is how you mold yourself. 
then writing the thesis will become uh, quite a challenge for you right because you are you have uh, decided to be very shy and very you know i am not sure so you are uh, you know uh, that will begin to you know give you problems when you finally start writing your thesis so how many of you consider yourself to be very shy uh, let me ask that question how many of you think i am able to see if you raise your hand so raise your hand if you say that you know i am a very shy person nobody is raising their hand but when i ask any question nobody speaks also okay. anybody wants to say anything at this stage okay anybody wants to react to what i am saying yes sir uh, utpal dash yes he said that yes. not at all sir he is writing in the chat box oh not okay. at all okay fine um that is good but uh, see what i have also noticed is see it is not just you guys okay i am not pointing out any fingers at you i noticed this uh, in a number of uh, people even uh, young employees that we take in etc see sometimes we give them opportunities to express themselves okay? but most of them you know they don't want to say anything they just uh, you know are very shy okay not at all is not a you know it is it doesn't justify itself okay unless you are willing to say a little bit more okay so the same problem will come when you say about your thesis also isn't it you have to you have to be able to write something okay just saying no i am not shy i mean that doesn't really convey anything to me okay unless you are willing to add uh, another few sentences right so utpal das can you say a little bit more about whatever you are trying to say that is the challenge you will face okay this is the uh, challenge of writing a thesis mic is off uh, you are not able to hear me okay you are not able to speak okay but can you not write he, he can write utpal you can write in the chat box or in the question ah, answer section if you are some day when you have to write your own thesis your own paragraphs okay this is the block that you will face okay not clearly understanding what should i say and if you don't make a habit out of it from the beginning i am very active in social media okay so when you say active in social media do you write okay it's good to be active in social media but if you are only observing what others say and if you are only going to give a like to them then uh, it is not going to help you in writing a thesis right if you are just sharing uh, something from here and there it is not going to help okay but if you are willing to uh, you know sort of comment okay uh, so that's good so utpal says that i do write a lot etc i am assuming that uh, you know he engages himself in some sort of a dialogue with people and try tries to convince other people that is what a thesis is all about isn't it you have some ideas you have done some work and you are trying to justify that uh, you know this is good stuff okay that is what uh, your uh, thesis is all about okay it uh, and uh, you know practice the art of uh, writing in a formal way also right see the discussions that we have in social media etc uh, when i say social media suppose uh, you know there are two kinds of media right one is uh, where the people just want to have fun like uh, maybe facebook or something like that right there uh, you are trying to relax you are trying to uh, you know de stress yourself and you may be trying to uh, you know talk to your friends and uh, relatives and so on Uh, whereas there is also a little bit more serious social media there is twitter there is linkedin etc so how many of you are active in linkedin in writing on linkedin how many of you other than utpal das i don't see anybody else See, these are all uh, things that you have to do. See, today world has changed, isn't it? 
sir uh, actually students some students uh, some participants are responding in the question answer section also oh okay there is another option i can only see the chat box uh, and i can see any if somebody is raising their hands no, there but, is a, uh, uh, just b beside the chat box uh, question answer section also there oh, really let me see only that. one or two students are responding there. one student okay. says tanushree oh. so if you are participating in linkedin learning for example and when experts uh, and you are following some people in your in your area of research and when they write something uh, you are able to see uh, sometimes there are serious discussions okay uh, so when i was a phd student they were discussion forums uh, which are very specific uh, in nature for example uh, if you are into parallel algorithms or something like that there will be a discussion forum for that and it's a great place to meet people who are engaged in research in the same area right and uh, you could form a group if you uh, today there are so many technologies available to form groups right uh, you could form an email group you could form a whatsapp group god knows what other technologies are there out uh, there right ultimately you have to meet people right the kind of people whom you may meet in conferences uh, in your domain right today the opportunities exist for you to meet them uh, virtually right find out uh, what they are discussing initially maybe you are a little bit shy to say anything but ultimately you have to learn to be bold right uh, see one of the difficulties in uh, uh, india is the number of phd students is usually very small right so and there is not a sufficiently large group uh, who work in the same area right so for example if you are uh, in vlsi or something like that uh, see in iit also uh, you know when i was a faculty uh, the number of students working in that area were very small right uh, maybe in some areas it is not so bad like communications and uh, dsp etc we may find more people but uh, uh, you know you have to find see the advantage of today's uh, you know sort of uh, social media etc is that if you don't find those people in your own uh, college or in your own uh, organization uh, you can find them elsewhere and uh, you know connect to them who know some of them will later be uh, you know your collaborators some of them may be your uh, reviewers of your paper things like that so there is a certain definite advantage in uh, networking okay and uh, see english language okay uh, it is not a native language for us right but uh, you know unfortunately you have to write your thesis in english only right uh, many of uh, you how many of you feel that writing in english is difficult for you how many of you feel that way raise your hand no don't worry about uh, you know uh, oh should i say something like this or whatever how many of you feel uh, that writing in english is a problem for you yeah utpal das i think you are very active so i have no dis, uh, you know i have no complaints okay but i think for many people writing in english is a problem right nobody is saying anything i don't know that means you don't need this training right so, uh, 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 santosh kumar responded uh, in cme have ah. some santosh kumar but it doesn't say anything it just has a <laughs> symbol yes yes sir yeah only yeah sachin warpe says i don't have any problems okay okay so i don't know who is going to benefit from this uh, because you guys already are writing you are active in social media so uh, what are the prop then you tell me sachin warpe and utpal das why are you attending this training and what are you 
intending here to, what are you intending to get from this training what are your questions let us make it uh, more q and a as a beginner okay what does it mean what does as a beginner mean I don't know how to present data. Okay. How to start research. Okay. See, this is not about how to start research. Maybe this particular training that I have been asked to give is about how to write a thesis. Okay. It's not about, uh, uh, you know, how to do research that others may have already touched. Okay. I'm sure others have talked about it. How the experts are working. I'm saying that I don't have any problems in English. Okay. Okay. So let us return to the topic of writing a thesis, right? Uh, so when you start writing the thesis, the assumption is that, you know, you have done something which uh, you are proud of. Okay. You have published maybe a few papers. Okay. And that is give you confidence. See, there can be a little bit of a difficulty at this point of time. I have seen students of both kinds. Okay, There are some students who have not really done enough work, but they want to write their thesis and graduate. Okay, And I have also seen students who are very, uh, you know, they have published many papers, but, uh, you know, they are hesitant to uh, submit their thesis. Right? So many times it's not clear to people when someone is ready to graduate, when somebody is willing to, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, consider that they have done enough work. The question, the answer to that question is, see this thesis that you have done, right? This opportunity that you obtained uh, for, uh, you know, being a PhD student and uh, it comes only in once in a lifetime. Okay, most people do only one PhD. Uh, there may be some, uh, you know, exceptions where some people do more than one PhD, but most of the time we only do this only once. Okay. And at the end, uh, you know, PhD, we should uh, consider, we should compare ourselves to, hey, what was I before I start? Okay. And how am I uh, four years or three years or five years, whatever that time period is. Have I changed myself? Okay. Am I now in a position to guide others to do the same thing? Right. It is something like a, you know, uh, you may have come across guides who guide you in a, let us say, when you go to some historical place or uh, Agra Fort or one of these uh, historical places, there is a guide there. Okay. And that guy takes you around and shows you what is there and he is willing to talk. See, the gift of the gap is very important. Okay, they are talking a lot. You can, can you have you ever met a guide who is very hesitant to talk? No, right? They talk a lot, right? And uh, they are confident that they have seen this place and they are willing to guide you. So if you feel that way, that today if I get another student whom I have to guide, okay, then I will be able to let us say in a matter of three or four years, make sure that this person also graduates and is able to write a thesis, then you are ready to graduate. Okay. And uh, how confident should you be in doing that? Even if you have, I would say about 20% confidence in, you know, being able to guide other research, it is not so bad, right? Because you are also going to learn a little bit after being, after joining as a faculty member. See. The skills about, uh, you know, uh, the skills about uh, writing a thesis, writing a proposal, guiding another PhD students, you will acquire them uh, as you go along also. It is not that somebody can be fully ready to do this when they join as a faculty member. Okay. So all the organizations understand this, but uh, you should feel confident that yes, I can also guide some research. Number one. Number two is. See, today uh, faculty members are expected to write uh, research proposals, okay? And uh, they are expected to bring in uh, research funding and so on. 
So ask yourself, hey, uh, did my PhD get me ready to do some of those things? Did I learn that ability to write a proposal? Did I learn the ability to find a new research problem that I can sort of uh, convince somebody that, uh, you know, this is a very important problem uh, for India. And uh, can I uh, approach a research agency and convince them to say that, you know, I have the right skills to solve this problem. And if you give me research funding, I'll be able to produce some uh, research results for this. If you are able to convince people, right, and write such research proposals, then, uh, you know, you will be a successful uh, faculty member, right? Or it may be that uh, sometimes the faculty members are expected to uh, take part in administration or take part in uh, things like, you know, organizing conferences and so on. If you can do even one or two of these activities very well at the end of your PhD, right? Then uh, you feel confident that yes, I will survive well as a faculty member. And that is when you should start writing your uh, thesis, right? So don't think that what you have done for your PhD, whatever research you have done for your PhD, that is not the last thing you are going to do in your life. Okay, you have a long life ahead of you. You have a long research career ahead of you. So what you do in your PhD thesis, right? You may forget after maybe a few years. The world will forget about it after a few years. There are not too many PhD students or PhD thesis out there, which are so famous that, you know, they change the world. Okay. You can count on your fingertips, such a monumental PhDs, which uh, have, you know, moved the world. Okay. There are a few, for example, I think, uh, the thesis by Shannon is considered to be a, you know, uh, amazing uh, thesis, right? So there may be just a few such theses, right? So the point I'm trying to make is the thesis is more the experience of writing a thesis, the experience of PhD is a lot more important than exactly what you did as part of your thesis, right? A few years later, nobody may refer to those papers that you published. But uh, the experience you acquired is what is going to, you know, take you forward. It is what is going to help you after you graduate. Is that clear to everybody? Is there any doubt about this point? All right. So how many of you had thought about what I just said? Did you, how many of you now feel that you are ready to write your thesis? When you say no third, what does it mean? It's not clear. Hina Kausar, you said no. That means it's not clear. Ritanjali Behra also says no, sir. So I'm not clear what you are trying to say. Ready, sir, without any pressure. Okay. So some of you feel ready and some of you feel you are not ready, right? If you feel you are not ready to write your thesis yet based on what I just said, then uh, ask yourself, uh, you know, and uh, have a discussion with your supervisor about, uh, you know, what more you can do, right? And uh, find some avenues to do some of the things which I said. See. Many of you can review papers for conferences. I don't know how many of you do that, right? How many of you are reviewing papers for conferences today or journals today, right? See, this is the time we should be doing such things, right? Not uh, when you become a busy faculty member, right? So you should uh, uh, spend a lot of time doing things like helping, uh, you know, review papers. Either you become a reviewer yourself in a conference or maybe help your uh, supervisor interviewing papers, okay? And especially journal papers, okay, which are difficult to read and review, right? Conference papers, it is still not too bad, right? But uh, let us say you become a reviewer for, uh, you know, a good journal. The journals where you publish your papers or where you are intending to publish your papers, then that will give you a fantastic uh, experience, okay? Another way to do this is, you know, you 
take a published paper in a journal. See, suppose your ambition is to uh, you know publish a paper in IEEE transactions uh, on uh, CAD of VLSI or something like that. So you take a paper, uh, let us say that uh, was published in the latest uh, issue, and just pretend that it is submitted for uh, publication. Okay, assume that it is not yet published. And then see whether you can review that paper as though it is submitted for. Uh, so one of the problems that PhD students go through is. Uh, they are. Uh, you know, they don't. You know, uh, consider themselves to be. Peers of those who are uh, publishing papers. OK, they're always afraid of, uh, you know, there is. You know, though they look at all the papers that are published in these conferences and journals, and uh, they think that you know those guys are uh, somehow different. Like I won't be able to match this. So don't think like that, right? If you start thinking like that, then uh, you know um, you will create a barrier. Okay, you that is when uh, you know that is why I'm suggesting that you review papers. Or at least uh, treat those papers that you are reading as though you are reviewing them and be critical about. See, if you start doing that, then writing your literature survey will be very easy. Okay. See, uh, when you write your thesis, you will have to write what is called as the introduction first, isn't it? So, what are the, what does the thesis usually include? Let me make a list here. So, you, you have to write an introduction. You have to write uh, what is called as a literature survey. It may be part of the introduction itself, right? Or it may be a separate chapter. It is up to you. Then you have to write your problem formulation. Okay. And then uh, you may have to write uh, the solutions that you came up with. So sometimes there could be, uh, you, know, you may have sub, uh, suggested two solutions, right? So sometimes people uh, take two problems and uh, uh, in that case, you may write two different chapters, right? And then finally, you will uh, write some conclusions. Okay? And you will possibly end with some uh, references. Okay? And occasionally, some appendices and so on, right? And uh, after that, uh, there will be a, maybe an abstract or a summary or whatever. Okay? So this is what you have to produce, okay? And is there a guideline on how big the thesis should be? Is there a guideline that it should be 200 pages? Frankly, nobody says anything like that. I have not seen any guideline that it should be minimum 100 pages, 200 pages. No, not really, right? Um, what is important is, you know, people will look at these two sections to understand whether you have understood the problem well. When I read these two, I have uh, read a lot of theses, right? Even today, some people send me, you know, the thesis for me to read, right? So I look at these two to see whether the student has a good background today. See, even if let us say he, the, his research is weak, he has not done a great job of, uh, you know, solving the problem. But if this is very strong, okay, there is still hope for this guy because maybe in future he will do some good work. So make sure that this is strong, okay? You will still be able to get a thesis done. Okay? So how do I do that? Uh, I should read sufficient papers critically. Okay? That is why I'm suggesting that when you take up a paper to read, uh, pretend that it is an unpublished paper and see whether you can be critical about it. Don't, uh, you know, become a, you know, like a bhakt of that, uh, you know, that author, right? And say, you know, oh, you know, he has said so, though it must be true. Okay? There may be a lot of flaws in the argument. There may be a lot of limitations in what that author is saying. So see whether you can point them out. Okay. Similarly, when you do your literature survey, a lot of people wrongly think that, uh, you know, they are supposed to give a tutorial about this topic. That is not true. Okay. You are not trying to educate uh, somebody on uh, you know that particular problem nobody is going to read your thesis to understand that domain no right on the contrary they want to know whether having understood all that 
are you able to sort of give a uh, sort of a quick overview of that uh, particular topic and then quickly go into you know what is the state of the art okay who has said what okay have you picked maybe about 10 papers or 15 papers so here is a list of references right so again, uh, there is no guideline of uh, 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 as to how many papers should be included in the references, right? So some people think that it is mandatory for them to put, uh, you know, hundred references. No, not true. Okay. I seriously suspect uh, if somebody is putting two hundred references here, then I'm not sure whether the student has really read all those papers. How many papers can one seriously read during their PhD? Maybe a reasonable number, maybe 25, 30 papers. The remaining you just gathered them because you know you were, and today it's very easy to gather. You know, you just Google search will Google will gather a lot of papers for you. So that doesn't help me. Okay. So don't put unnecessarily a lot of references. You know, you don't want to be an embarrassing situation where somebody asks you a question about a specific reference when you present your thesis. And then you realize that, you know, they'll realize that you really haven't read that paper. So don't uh, be in that uh, situation. Even if you have only read 25 references, 25 is a reasonable number, not a bad number at all. Okay. And, uh, you know, if you have collected the good uh, set of references, and if you are able to critically, uh, you know, read all those papers and sub, uh, you know, sort of summarize all the contributions so far and then point out what is missing. Okay. Then that is a pretty good job. Okay. You have done a good job. Even though your own, see, the, what is PhD? PhD is all about looking at a particular uh, small area and understanding what the state of the art there is, identifying one problem that has not yet been solved. And then say that, you know, I'm going to present some solution there. So you see, you will spend maybe about two or uh, more years identifying that. Okay. That is why this takes long. This part, okay. These three things, they may take you like two years to do. Okay. And that is where initially, at least uh, you may, you may need a lot of guidance from your supervisor, etc. So if you have a supervisor who is helpful, then it may take a little less time for you. But otherwise, I have seen people spend a lot of time trying to get this done. Okay. So like I was saying, I uh, when I look at a PhD thesis, I look at this to see whether, you know, he, forget about what this student has done as part of his or her research. At least, will this person really be you know, uh, does he have the ability to go and uh, look at an area in a critical way? So reviewing papers will be an excellent way of uh, acquiring the skill. Okay. And you have to do it from day one of your PhD thesis. And all these, uh, that is why I was talking about participating in discussions and all that. And uh, there is a formal language that you have to use when you write your thesis, right? Uh, that also you should practice, okay? And the more papers you read, okay, the more you are going to get that uh, kind of a, uh, you know, language uh, control, right? English is not our native language, but uh, we have to sort of acquire that uh, ability, right? Uh, it is okay, we may have limitations, but uh, we have to overcome those limitations. Then I look at this, these uh, chapters, Okay, to see whether this uh, student has any skills to do problem solving. So what are some problem solving skills? Uh, maybe you have uh, understood how to do simulations. Okay, uh, maybe you have understood how to do some theoretical, uh, you know, analysis. Maybe some, uh, you know, you have understood how to uh, do queuing theory models or something like that in order to, you know, model that problem. Okay. And uh, see whether uh, you have some uh, ability to 
shows uh, shed some light okay see you may see that uh, people are doing research in many places right it is not just phd students who are doing research people who are in the industries are also doing research okay but they are not very usually very keen on doing any theoretical research uh, they are unlikely to if you go to industry they are not likely to develop any research which leads to theorems and proofs so i think long ago in uh, at and t bell labs and ibm etc they used to follow that kind of research but even there uh, i don't see too much of that happening today right so we look at uh, academia to do that kind of research okay and uh, how to get that skill of you know uh, formulating theorems and uh, proving them etc again you have to uh, sort of read more and more papers to acquire that skill right see you can acquire any skill if you spend time on it okay it doesn't have to be uh, something uh, you know very difficult or anything like that uh, so you have to conf have confidence in yourself saying that you know i will read and i will acquire that skill okay so like i was saying it could be that you will become an excellent uh, uh, you know you will acquire excellent uh, skills in using tools okay tools may be simulation tools or uh, you know any other tools okay uh, today depending on your area you know many of you may be in uh, computer area some of you may be in uh, electronics uh, some of you may be in uh, other areas also uh, so it's difficult for me to give any one example but uh, today, a lot of tools are available, a lot of public uh, domain software is available. Uh, the ability to, you know, make the, all those things work together properly. Uh, that is a skill by itself and you will acquire that skill. So when I read these uh, uh, sections in a thesis, what I am looking for is, hey, this guy, does he know or uh, this uh, uh, student, does uh, he have the ability to solve a problem okay tomorrow when uh, he has to guide students okay uh, or when he has to let us say write some research proposals and uh, convince somebody that he or she will solve some problems will this person have the ability to take up a reasonable size problem and try to come up with something you know significant in that area okay so that is what this is all about and then there is the ability to convince others okay sometimes people are good at doing their work but they don't know how to convince the world about what they have done okay so these solution these sections are also important from that aspect okay? and uh, that ability is mostly seen in abstract and conclusions okay so when i read your abstract uh, you know i should be excited to sort of read the rest of the thesis it should come across as a wow i mean this is such a lot of uh, good work here right so i will recommend that you first uh, uh, you know write uh, these three parts okay because you will start uh, you know you will spend a few years doing this right uh, finding a good uh, problem to solve or maybe one or two small problems to solve and then when you start doing some of your own work maybe you have uh, collected uh, some data uh, and all that and you have uh, started uh, implementing some stuff and uh, you know these are easy to write okay because you you are very uh, comfortable writing these things right because uh, you know it is like you have done these things with your hands so you are most comfortable talking about it, right? So my suggestion is write these uh, sections first, uh, and then go on to write the introduction and literature survey. Okay? And then if necessary, revisit these. Okay, when you start writing this, you may suddenly realize that, you know, hey, you know, uh, maybe I should revisit what I have done. So sometimes, uh, uh, when people start writing their thesis, actually new ideas begin to come to their head. Okay. Oh, I wish I had done it like that. Oh, I wish I had done it like that. So note those ideas down and you can always put them in conclusions and future work. Okay. 
So writing a thesis can be a very uh, therapeutic experience. Okay. You feel that, uh, you know, it should be an exercise where at the end you start feeling uh, good about what you have done. Okay. You may also feel a little bad about what you have done. Okay. That's okay. Okay. See, you may start feeling that, you know, oh, I seem to have a lot of limitations in what I have done. Okay. Because what happens is you will take maybe three or four years to do your PhD. And by that time, many new tools have come, new things have happened. And uh, it is difficult for you to restart all over again. So nobody is expecting you to do that. Okay. It is okay to state, uh, you know, the sort of limitations of what you have done. Okay. No work is without limitations. Okay. If you go and look at, you know, the papers published, uh, even in journals and conferences today, you will see that there are some limitations in what they have done, right? But in spite of the limitations, you know, there must be still some value in that paper. Somebody would like, so ask yourself, why would somebody read my thesis? What value is it for them? Okay. So like I told you, they should get some value here. And they should say, yeah, I, I think this person, Person understands this problem very well. Tomorrow, if he teaches this in your, in my in our college, you know that will be a very good uh, you know uh, value. Or you should have picked up uh, problem solving skills. Or you should have read a uh, you should have become a storehouse of knowledge that anybody can go to. Okay. So that is what uh, writing a thesis is really all about. I have given you a very quick. Uh, sort of an overview. I have, I don't have time to go into any great depth today, right? Uh, so please, uh, you know, uh, feel free to ask questions. We have a few minutes. Uh, so I'll be more than happy to answer any questions based on what I have just said. So was it, uh, you know, uh, was it useful to any one of you what I have just said? And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Now, this is my test for you. You know, how many of you are, I made some statements, right? I want to know whether you are able to take that and do some discussion based on that. Participants can write, okay. I am trying to see your uh, question and answer. So there is a one question from Utpal. Huh, what is he saying? Sir, the only you... guy who asks anything. Okay. Yes. Sir, you do not. Uh, what does it mean? Sir, do, Sir, do not do think not... that there should be a re second reviewer. Um, when you say reviewer, you mean reviewer for the thesis? Uh, uh, okay, maybe, see, who reads your thesis, man? One is, you know, you should give it to your supervisor who will have the patience to read your thesis, right? And in addition to that, if you think that there is another person who can help you read your thesis, if you can convince, uh, let us say, another researcher, right? Uh, then uh, feel free. And that is where the discussion forums may also be very useful. And uh, see, if you can talk about what you have done without giving away you know, too many details, etc. See, you should not reveal too many things because, you know, then there is a danger that you have revealed uh, the solution to somebody and uh, you don't want to do that. But if you can talk about your research in an external forum, that is why we have conferences, etc. frankly, right? But today, in addition to conferences, people also have these uh, serious uh, discussion forums. So if you can find some other researcher who can read your thesis and comment, that will be very useful to you. Right. Uh, uh, and so do that before you submit it to the uh, university, right? So that at least two eyes have seen and have given some feedback on. Uh, see, there are two kinds of things that uh, you are worried about. One is simple problems like uh, spelling errors, typing errors, uh, uh, data, you know, some uh, 
uh, you know, data may be wrong or whatever. So usually those are easy to spot. Okay, today even tools may be able to spot uh, spelling errors, grammar errors, etc. Uh, the second thing is what I was telling you a little bit more at the higher level, right? Uh, what I was telling you, you know, can somebody judge you on the, you know, on your contributions, right? And uh, because you will use this thesis to maybe apply for jobs, right? Uh, so if you have not convinced the world that, you know, you are able to uh, understand a uh, problem and sort of uh, do a good literature survey, identify some interesting uh, problems and, uh, you know, from some problem solving skills, etc. Um, so those are the things that, uh, you know, the world is interested in. So those unfortunately reviewers that you may find around you uh, whether they will be able to give you that or not i'm not sure the, that is what supervisors actually actually do okay that is why you need a research advisor research supervisor because that person has seen the world okay? that person has seen the world for many years and they are able to judge uh, you know whether you are ready to graduate or what is the you know missing part etc etc What else? So there is some more question from Tanushree and other participants. Where are, the chat, where are they? In the chat box only, sir. I don't know. Utpal is the only a person who is. Sir, do you have. Vijay no, Kothari. No. Uh, sir, do you have a right in the hypothesis and the hypothesis testing results? Okay. Let me. Ask that, uh, sir. I have just started my PhD. However, there were many lots and I'll explain by you, which is so okay. Tanushri is more of a comment. It, is it a good idea to write a review paper before technical implementation? The, re, the idea of writing a uh, review paper is about this part only. See, if you are able to write a review paper, um, you typically write a review paper when you have read a lot of papers and you have become sort of a you know an expert in that area right uh, frankly i'll tell you uh, a good survey paper is not very easy to write a good review paper is not very easy to write and if you are able to write a good review or a survey paper you know in fact uh, experts are invited to write such papers okay so definitely it's a good idea to write review paper and survey papers and uh, you know you will have to do that anyway when you write your thesis but uh, if you write such a review paper it will always be useful to you later okay um, but i am warning you that it is not such an easy thing review doesn't mean just uh, repeat whatever very see it's very easy to write a paper like this uh, collect some 25 papers and uh, you know borrow some little bit from it that is not a review paper okay that is just a you know cut and paste kind of a thing. Okay, that but when you can you present it to an audience? Okay, see, imagine that you take your review paper and let us say you are giving a seminar based on that. How many people will at the end come back and say, "Wow, I mean, you explained it really well. You seem to know this field very well, right?" And uh, how many of you will be able to answer questions that people are going to ask? If you are able to do that, then you know you are you are very good. You are already you know you have established that skill, and uh, you are ready to write your thesis. But if you are just to say repeating, you know, uh, uh, so and so said this, so and so said this, based on um, you know some paragraphs that you have borrowed from various uh, authors' papers, that is not a review paper. Is that clear? Okay. I think there was one guy. How to start PhD thesis writing? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, how to start means, as I told you, you know, uh, try to start here. Okay. Uh, don't start by writing the abstract or etc. You know, that should be the last thing you do. My suggestion is, you know, start you. 
when you start writing the thesis, uh, you have already done some work. Okay. You have already understood uh, that problem. You have done some work. So directly start with this chapter. Let us say chapter three or four, whatever it is, right? And uh, when you write that, you will start having some confidence, right? Um, and you may have to parallelly start doing this also, right? Uh, maybe some people will compile the list of references first and then go into this. If you are really having a bottleneck, if you are really sort of stuck at a point where you are not able to write the thesis, my suggestion is go and first build a list of references. This is something that you can do. Okay? And then while you pick the references that you, see, you don't have to include every reference that you collected, okay? You may collect, uh, you know, 400 papers when you are doing your thesis. Does it mean that you have to put all of them? No. Okay, be very choosy about what you put here. Okay. So when you do this exercise itself, at the end, you will start having uh, some uh, confidence about what. Then you can go here. Okay. Then go and uh, do this. Okay. And like I said, when you, then you may want to come back here and do a little bit of uh, modification here. So a little bit of iterative thing will happen and uh, use the right tools okay don't write your thesis in a uh, you know like ms word or something you know from it's not probably a, such a good idea right uh, use uh, latex or something like that and uh, make everything a separate file okay uh, you can don't write everything in one big large file like that because you will quickly you know start facing problems okay? the advantage of latex is that uh, you can write everything as a separate file and then integrate everything in the top level. So when you are dealing with a small file, you, things seem to be in control. Okay, otherwise things will go out of control. I hope that uh, was a quick answer. All right. Uh, I think, what is this? Uh, write the hypothesis and the hypothesis. See, um, it, this question about hypothesis, etc. See, I think there is a little bit of a damage that has been done by all these research methodologies and all that. See, take all that with a little bit of a pinch of salt, okay? See, unfortunately, somebody wrote these research methodologies, book or whatever, and they have done a lot of damage by sort of filling all kinds of theory in the minds of students. You know, are you able to take that research methodologies work and read uh, some of the papers that you are reading from various journals and conferences and uh, are you able to see any correlation i don't see any correlation right the hypothesis testing etc if you are a person who works in uh, let us say uh, statistics uh, then it makes sense you you know we look at data and we come up with a hypothesis and we try to see whether that is true or false we collect data we you know generate a lot of statistics. If that is what you have done for your thesis, then it's okay. But if you have developed an algorithm for, uh, uh, let us say, routing packets or something like that, what you know? How will you use this hypothesis and all this thing? It's very difficult. Okay. The only thing I can think of is suppose the hypothesis is that this uh, router outperforms uh, another uh, router. Okay, then that may be the hypothesis and then you can try to show whether that is true or false by, you know, running various, uh, uh, you know, test cases and seeing how well you are. But what I see most students do is they will implement their algorithm and they will implement maybe another algorithm. They will build a table in which they will say that in five cases out of six, their algorithm is doing better. Is that uh, a proof that your algorithm will always do well? I'm sorry, it is not. Right, but do, does anybody have the ability to really generate so much data and uh, show that their algorithm always performs very well? I don't think anybody is interested in that kind of a you know uh, proof. Also, okay, you want to know whether see if you are uh, see even let us look at the industry, right? See industry also, you know we are de designing chips, we are designing software. Right? Um, is there any hypothesis testing kind of a thing that is happening about does Google always, uh, uh, you know, give the you know uh, correct results? Is anybody working on that hypothesis, etc.? 
I don't think so. Right? So I'm like not very comfortable when people, you know, go into that research methodologies, uh, you know, and all that. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not much in favor of that. Okay? Why RM is a mandatory for all Indians? I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not. Uh, but I have seen uh, many people sort of uh, in, indoctrinated about this research methodology. Um, I don't think there is one research methodology, unfortunately, everybody, my suggestion is read papers. Okay. Don't get into this too much research methodology aspect, get into, you know, read papers in your domain. That is your, uh, you know, much better for you than trying to read how to do research. This too much of, uh, you know, um, what I call is, uh, you know, methodology thing, you know, you see, for example, if you have to write a book, right? Suppose you have decided to write a book. See, you can read a lot of papers on how to write a book. Okay, that will not really help you. Reading more books will help you. Okay, that is how we are built. I think most of us are built like that. When we see, uh, uh, did you go through any formal training on how to, uh, you know, do social media when you started using social media? I don't think so, right? You started looking at what others do. And uh, maybe you started, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, getting ideas on, oh, I see, I like the way this person writes. So let me also try to do it similarly. That is how you, most of us are, uh, you know, they, we function like that, right? So read more papers that will help you to write your paper. Whereas just reading a lot of things about research methodology, I don't know how it will help you to write a paper. Okay, Vineet, I think uh, I have already taken more time. Uh, than sir, uh, sir, there is one more question for Matthew. Uh, this is the last question, I think. He's asking, uh, hello. hello. Uh -huh. uh, while doing the literature review, which one should refer more, research paper or review papers? You should refer to research papers. Okay. If others have written a review of some of the papers, it's good to read that. But don't, uh, you know, just base uh, everything on one review paper like that, right? Uh, my suggestion is, uh, you know, pick some, uh, see today, I don't know how you people do your literature survey, but uh, I don't know whether you have access to IEEE, Explore, etc. And if you find papers there, whether you are able to download, see, not everybody has that, uh, flexibility, right? Because purchasing papers on IEEE may be very expensive. But IEEE Explorer has a lot of ability to, you know, browse uh, a specific journal. I don't know how many of you have understood how to use IEEE Explorer, right? See there, uh, you know, you can go and uh, uh, browse papers from a specific journal. And nowadays they make these early access uh, papers, uh, you know, available to people. So that should be your uh, method, right? Uh, try to get uh, some good papers from some good, good uh, universities. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, don't, you know, I have seen, uh, see, I have, uh, once I was a PhD, uh, you know, sort of a thesis reviewer for a, um, some student in Bangalore. And I was very critical when I looked at the kind of papers that he had chosen to chosen to put in his uh, list of references. Some unknown uh, authors from some unknown conference. You don't do that. Okay. Even if you do very small delta work, but if your literature survey is very strong and you have chosen good papers, right? You are in good company, right? It will help you after your PhD. But because you decided that, you know, you will look at some unknown conference, some unknown author, and then compared to that author, I'm doing better. I don't think it is going to help anybody, right? Uh, it is not a good uh, way to do things, right? That is why you have to go and refer to good journals, okay? That is why re references are rated, no? Why do you think journals are given all those ratings and so on? That is precisely the reason why they are given ratings, okay? So there is no point in going to some uh, journal, uh, which is sort of unknown where, uh, you know, uh, people who are not really doing any serious work are publishing paper. Don't get into that kind of a habit. Okay. 
you would have uh, see remember i told you again see when people read your phd thesis they are, they can judge you a little bit on uh, you know what you have done and it is a firm uh, if it's a firm foundation that is good enough okay. on that foundation you can build many things okay tomorrow your career is just starting okay but if you are if you are going to build a very weak foundation there then unfortunately when you start your real work you know the foundation is not strong so it will be difficult for you to if you graduate with such a weak foundation you know you, you really will not be able to do anything great later okay i'm sorry i'm being very blunt here and very critical but somebody has to say that okay because i am in many faculty selection meetings etc where you know people who have done their phd etc they come but you realize quickly that you know their preparation is very poor okay so don't be in that situation right so this is an opportunity for you to strengthen your foundations very well right so don't uh, be in a situation where you want to graduate but your professor doesn't think that you are ready to graduate okay on the other hand it will be good if you are feeling diffident sir should i really graduate but your professor says no no you are really, you are ready to graduate you you should go okay can i put my published paper same to same or this is a question that has been asked before gopala krishna if you have this that is the problem that i think some of this plagiarism software seem to have if you have published a research paper if you reuse it identically unfortunately that uh, plagiarism check may come back if your university has a mechanism where you can justify and say look i have borrowed from my own paper and i am the only author along with my advisor if they are willing to you know let go then i will advise you to reuse that paper as it is otherwise uh, you know be careful you may want to reword etc any other questions before uh, we i think sir no more question okay thank you very much so i wish all of you uh, you know very best uh, depending on which uh, stage of your phd you are in uh, some of you may be you know in the early stages so take my advice and uh, see how you can build a strong foundation so that uh, when you graduate you know we can look forward to your uh, okay sir thank you sir thank you for the nice presentation on the th how to write a thesis and i hope all the participants will be benefited from this session thank you sir namaskar sir uh, as we uh, our next speaker already puja ma'am already have joined ma'am if you permits uh, we'll start the next session within 5 minutes can you hear me ma'am so that oh, participants sure. can have some water okay sure definitely okay, okay.